Sir, you were telling me off camera, Europe really needs a reality check. We need to be much more forceful on Russia. When you say that, what do you mean? I would like to say that uh, the job is half done. Because, uh, yes, we reacted in quite a unitary form as far as the sanctions towards Russia and also as far as the military and humanitarian assistance to Ukraine. But uh, now we are already in the third, fourth week of uh, this aggression from Russian side. And the uh, job is half done because there are still companies in Russia which are functioning for different types of reasons. Then as far as Europe itself, I think we have to go complete with uh, uh, completion of this uh, deep Putinization of these societies where the corrupt oligarchic uh, authoritarian Russian um, people have been uh, really uh, very deeply rooted now in these societies, and this has to be done. And as far as uh, military and other support to Ukraine, I would say that uh, maybe it sounds at the beginning very kind of uh, even dangerous approach, but I think we should consider uh, to reverse this uh, very early escape of a number of our embassies uh, from Kiev because uh, the country needs a support, Ukraine needs a support. And, and sir, when you say deep Putinized, I wonder what do you mean by that? And if, and if it means what I think it means, many Europe say that's very provocative, but you say Europe should not be scared of being provocative when it comes to Russia. So, so how do you go about that? Well, first of all, uh, Kremlin thinking about provocation is very simple. If they will be willing to do, they will always find an excuse to tell that this was a provocation. So that's not important. I think we simply should look into the eyes of uh, Kremlin leaders and say, now you committed a crime, you committed aggression, now we will act. And uh, uh, there is nothing uh, uh, provocative by simply telling, look, you have been by corruptive or other means buying these villas, buying these properties, and you are now waging an aggressive war, just like Hitler's Germany, against a neighboring country, but at the same time you still want to enjoy a great life in the West, which you despise. This is not possible. And, and, and of course, I want to ask you one thing. Uh, you know, you say deputize, uh, you say a lot of this is, is almost like Hitler after Nazi Germany. Uh, your country has a history with Russia. Of course, it's no, no, not a secret that you were part of the Soviet Union. I wonder, when you look at what's happening, is this Vladimir Putin being a madman, or is this someone who's made very clear over 20 years, my idea is to restore the USSR because it's greatness for Russia that I'm after. In many ways, we have been warning already for almost 20 years. So he's not a madman, this happening. is a plan. What is his state of mind personally at this moment? It's difficult to say because we don't know the information from the first hands. And of course, he is um, kind of confused because he was obviously not thinking that this type of war uh, will not succeed. Uh, but at the same time, we still have to act in a way that uh, we force all the Russian society also to rethink its stance. And I think it includes also very much of information sphere and, and all the possibility to break this bubble of information which Kremlin is using for their own population. And, and sir, just two very brief questions. There's a real debate about what to do with energy imports. It is becoming clear that your sanctions, and you said this was going to be the mother of all sanctions, but they're not for Russia. They continue to make payments in dollars. Is it time to step it up and target energy? Well, first of all, we have to get out all the Western companies from Russia. It's their moral duty to leave this country now. As far as energy, of course, if the country has been on the gas or oil needle for 20 or 30 years, it's difficult to do it in one day. But imagine the situation, what if that not be Ukraine uh, invaded by Russia, but would be European Union invaded? Would we still uh, go into the war and buy gas? That's so it's so it's a mistake. So when Germany says uh, the reality is we can't unplug, you, you, your thinking is that Germany's wrong. You can't do it. Well, it's probably very difficult to do it immediately, but let's put it like this. To be rational at the same time, we probably have to uh, be hyperactive and very fast to unplug as fast as we can. Really as fast as we can and not to think about returning to this anymore. 
So you say after this is a, a point of no return, essentially. It's, it's isolation for Russia. But when it comes to Ukraine, there's many out there who believe at this point, this is a hell of a war. It's 26 days. It's been brutal on the Ukrainian population. Just negotiate any ceasefire and get on with it. What's your take on that? Ceasefire is not a way out. The way out is immediate uh, withdrawal of all the Russian troops from Ukrainian territory. There is no other way out. And I would say that Ukrainians, by their blood, paid also for the membership in European Union. So I understand Ukraine cannot become a member today or tomorrow, but there must be a certain fast track established along with the way how we will pay, because we would have to pay for the reconstruction of this country. So I believe that five years, that would be the limit put also in our planning when we, if everything goes okay, should accept this country as a member country. And, and over the weekend, uh, we saw the Russians say, you have to surrender Mariupol. We also saw them bringing out the big weapons, so the hypersonic missiles. When you look at the situation on the ground, do you really believe, seriously, look into your heart, that Ukraine can win this war? Ukraine already won this war. Yes, there will be more sacrifices, but even if Mariupol falls, even if Kiev falls, which I don't think will happen, uh, the struggle will continue because these people have nowhere to retreat. And in fact, I must say also our particularly Western European um, uh, friends and sisters and brothers, also we have nowhere to retreat. This is a way where we have to stand and keep the line because we have been retreating on the front of this aggressor and dictator for too long. And that was our hugest mistake. And just as a final question, I know you have communications with the Ukrainian government. Uh, when you hear from Zelensky, is it obvious to you that this man will either win or die in Ukraine? That's his thinking? He will win. And we should stand with him.